My brother was killed in Barranquilla, Colombia in the 90s. He was shot. He died instantly. Sofia Vergara and fiance Nick Loeb got in a bit of a New Year's Eve scuffle. Sofia hurled curse words, got her dress pulled down. This shouldn't be out there, you know, for people to give their, their opinion when there's nothing to talk about. At 28 years old, during a routine doctor's visit, my doctor fell a lump in my neck, told me that I had thyroid cancer. Sofia Vergara has gone through tons of trauma in her life, from dating mobsters and drug lords to watching her older brother shot and her younger brother wither away from addiction. She has seen it all. Sofia has survived cancer and was sued over her own embryos. On top of it all, she recently announced that she's divorcing her husband. So what's going on with Sofia? Let's get into it. Sofia Vergara is one of the most beloved actresses in Hollywood, and I used to watch her on Modern Family and so much more because she's enjoyable and she's great at what she does. But her past has a darkness to it, and she's had to go through a lot to get where she is today. I'm talking drugs, murder mafia she's gone through some of the worst things that anyone ever has and she survived it and she's set for life not only is the modern family star one of tv's highest paid women she also presides over a 37 million dollar endorsement empire with a fiance named joe who's also successful in his own right but even though her life appears to be charmed her rise to the top has been fraught with tragedy and heartache one of six children born to a housewife and cattle farmer in Colombia, Sofia was scouted for her first TV commercial at 17. The Pepsi ad which featured Sofia in a bikini was immediately a hit throughout Latin America. But the ad was a one-off gig and she was actually studying to be a dentist. So she wasn't on the red carpet yet, she was focusing on how to fix root canals. She actually ended up marrying her childhood sweetheart Joe and then a year later she gave birth to her son at the age of 20 years old. So while her career began with this Pepsi ad at the age of 17, it didn't immediately launch her into stardom even though people all over Latin America loved her. Cuando calienta el sol, sientes el incontenible deseo de disfrutar el gran sabor de hoy. Even though Sofia was headed on a good path, she wasn't necessarily happy with her life. So in 1993, Sofia dropped out of dental school and divorced her husband. She decided to move away and she started working as a model. She had a starring role on a television program and other networks noticed her and wanted to work with her as well. Actually in 1994, so about a year after her divorce, she was asked by Univision to host a travel show based in Miami. And she saw it as a chance to give her son a better life, so she said yes immediately. Con Fernando Fiore y Sofía Vergara. She also wanted to leave to Miami, not only for the show, but gang violence was getting really bad in her country. And unfortunately, her brother Rafael was murdered in Colombia. She grew up there and, you know, violence and drug trafficking plagued her country. Her older brother was shot during an attempted kidnapping in 1998. She called this time in her life a nightmare, so she decided to move her mother and sister and younger brother to Miami as she pursued a career on television, which at this point, she wasn't like super successful, so that's a big move to go and just like pick up your entire family and get them out of there. My brother Rafael, um, and this was his watch, he passed away when he was 26 years old. Um, he was two years older than me, so right now he would be 48. Um, and he passed away and of course it you know changed everybody's life in in our in our family my brother was killed in Barranquilla Colombia in the 90s it was a very um, dramatic uh, thing um, he was shot and unfortunately none of us was able to to say goodbye to him he died instantly we, we are four siblings and my brother him and I were closest to age so we grew up uh, very close to, to each other. After he was killed, we um, kind of like all came together and I decided since I was already living in the United States to bring the rest of my family. 
Sophia was right. Even though moving her family to the United States was a safer choice, they were all changed after this incident with her brother. She said her mother was like a zombie. I got a big house and we all lived together. I was so grateful to be in this country. Sophia actually has a tattoo on her wrist of an R for Raphael as a touching tribute to him. And it actually turns out that she was inspired to get this tattoo by the late actor Heath Ledger, which if you guys have not seen my Heath Ledger video about uh, the Olsons, definitely go and check that out because that is an intense video. Tonight's poem is actually a uh an ode to my sister. March 23rd, 1997, I've been groundbound because she left Earth to go back home amongst the stars right next to God. Because I got to come to terms with the fact that my sister ain't never coming back. My brother passed away the same year that your sister passed away. Man. Yeah, I can feel your pain. I know what this is. I know what it is to have somebody taken from you without you knowing. Brandon got the golden buzzer, sending him straight to the finals. Even though Sophia had a ton of responsibility with her family and her son, she was still out here dating people. She started getting involved with an interesting man named Chris. He was from Staten Island, but he was known as the darling of the Miami's South Beach nightclub scene. And he had a reputation as a mobster. He was a member of a gang that operated under the name Bonanno Crime Family with a rap sheet of alleged burglaries and bank heists so lengthy that he earned the nickname the binger. Chris actually pleaded guilty to murder and ratted out mob bosses to shorten his sentence. He eventually served six years in jail, then the couple went their separate ways. But Sophia, I guess, still liked the bad boy mentality. She reportedly had a fling with a former Colombian drug lord named Andres, who was released from a 20-month jail stint in 2004. In an interview, he called the actress a marvelous woman who I love dearly. I mean, all these like, all these mobsters, of course they love her. In 2005, she actually ended up moving to LA, so I don't know if that's what broke up her relationship with the drug lord, but her family also continued to struggle as her stardom increased. For example, she brought her younger brother, Julio, to Miami after their older sibling's death. Sophia watched helplessly as he battled drug and alcohol addictions that resulted in over 30 arrests within a decade. In 2011, Julio was reported back to Colombia. Sophia told Parade Magazine to see somebody dying over 10 years, little by little, that's the worst punishment. Now he's like another person. With so many bad things happening, it creates a tough skin. Even when horrible things happen to me, I go on. Which is a straight up fact. I mean, she's gone through so much, she must be really tough and hardened, which is really unfortunate to think about because and nobody wants to see someone go through so much tragedy in their life. Now let's talk a little bit about Nick Loeb and his relationship with Sophia, because he was the founder of Onion Crunch, which I'm not entirely sure what that is, comment below. And these two met at a Golden Globes party back in 2010 and were on and off for four years. They were on and off for a good reason. A source claims that they would fight all the time. It was very uncomfortable to be around them sometimes. She's feisty, he's dorky, they were like, oh, and water. It also didn't help that Chris was getting out of prison and supposedly she was chatting to him as well. Actually, there was a New Year's Eve party in Miami and I guess uh, there was a fight between her man and Chris. Nick did not like the fact that Sophia was talking to her ex Chris and Chris is a mobster so I wouldn't mess with him, especially because He's a rat as well. I feel like if you're a rat in that type of world, then they're gonna get you after the fact. Sofia Vergara and fiance Nick Loeb got in a bit of a New Year's Eve scuffle over the long weekend when the couple hit up Miami Hotspot Story Nightclub. According to the New York Post, page six, Loeb got involved in a physical brawl after a fellow club goer spilled on Sofia's dress. Sophia hurled curse words, got her dress pulled down, and Loeb was hurled out of the club by security. Despite the big scene, however, sources say the two made up outside the club and retired to their hotel room to finish ringing in the new year. I hate when couples fight. It just really drives me crazy. I'm personally not a fighter. I am, when it comes to fight or flight, I am flying. I'm jetting away as soon as I can because I just don't even want to get to that place emotionally. But it sounds like this is the regular for Sophia and Nick because she actually tweeted saying that it's a dangerous club run by a thug wanting press. Talking about her ex, Chris. The arguments just accelerated after that. He felt humiliated and she felt like he was trying to control her. The Post's Richard Johnson reported that Sophia was turned off by her fiance Chris's constant Huckerstonism? Huckerstonism? I actually don't know that word, but 
this constant attempt of him trying to get his onion crunch brand condiment into the White House. Like, I guess he has this <laughs> onion crunch brand condiment and Sophia was turned off by how he kept trying to push it onto people including the president. Now I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about Sophia's health because she's also had issues there. If you guys didn't know she actually went into a battle with cancer which I had no idea about. Sophia overcame thyroid cancer as a 28 year old young woman. She came across a lump on her throat in 2000. Oh that's so scary and she had no symptoms at the time but she got it checked out and she had to undergo surgery. It actually turns out that her family has a history of thyroid cancer, which affects how the body metabolizes sugar. And she actually had a pretty lucky situation because she was able to go through this surgery and they were able to remove it before it actually spread to her body. Quote, when you go through something like this, it's hard, but you learn a lot from it. Your priorities change. You don't sweat the small stuff and it had a good ending. The treatment not only included surgery, but radiation therapy. And Sophia supposedly takes regular medication for it as well. And honestly, I don't know how she has the time to do everything because now she's like an advocate for these things and stands up for it and spreads information. And I think it's amazing what she's been able to do by taking this situation and really everything else she's gone through and flipping it. At 28 years old, during a routine doctor's visit, my doctor felt a lump in my neck. They did a lot of tests and finally told me that I had thyroid cancer. When you're young and you hear that word cancer, your mind goes to so many places. But I tried not to panic and I decided to get educated. I read every book and found out everything I could about it. I was fortunate to have caught it early and to have the support of my doctors and most importantly, my family. I learned a lot during that time, not just about thyroid cancer, but I also learned that in times of crisis, we're better together. We have all witnessed the power of coming together just this past year. Scientists around the globe collaborated in unprecedented ways to develop the COVID-19 vaccine in record time. Human rights activists took to the streets all over the world to support social justice and equality and people everywhere step up to support small businesses and entrepreneurs in their communities. We're better together. And if we're going to end cancer, it's going to require a team effort. Sophia, who has held the title of the highest earning woman in American entertainment, has dedicated herself to helping children with cancer overcome the disease. She's now raising awareness and money for cancer research. It also looks like she's building a cancer center in Columbia, where she's from. Quote, I visited the cancer ward in a hospital in Columbia, and my parents were just sitting on the floor while the kids were being treated. When you're a mother and your kid is sick, you feel it yourself, and noted that it'd be a good idea to set up a comfortable place for parents. Sometimes we forget what is important. Like baseball? Like you. Diagnosed with an aggressive cancer, Johan came to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Our discoveries have helped to increase the overall childhood cancer survival from 20% to 80%. And we won't stop until every child survives. How big is 80%? This big. Now, while we're on the topic of Sophia's body, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how she was sued for her own embryos. I mean, this story, it, this entire situation just gets weirder and weirder. Modern Family star Sophia is being, in effect, sued by two frozen embryos she conceived with her partner she split from. The embryos are named Emma and Isabella, and they're listed in Louisiana court documents. She and Nick separated in 2014, and he has already tried to unsuccessfully sue for the embryo's custody. The new lawsuit argues that the embryos are being deprived of their inheritance from a trust by not being born. What? Is this his attempt to get money from her? The trust is reported to be created for them in Louisiana, although the embryos are located in California. Louisiana is considered a pro-life state, shout out to Terry Joe, and under its law, a fertilized egg is seen as a judicial judicial person the louisiana case names a trustee as plaintiff but not chris himself the suit asks that the embryos be transferred to chris so that he they could be born and then receive their inheritance what the hell who is trying to get this money out of these embryos it turns out that these two created the embryos at a california clinic through in vitro back in 2013 a contract signed at the time is reported to have stipulated that neither partner could do anything with the embryos without the other's consent 
Sophia, according to the lawsuit, is alleging to refuse allowing them to be implanted in a surrogate mother. Chris's legal team alleged that both Sophia and Chris went into the IVF process understanding that the embryos would be brought to term, which I don't think is fair. You can go in and do the whole process, but a lot of people, they want to freeze those eggs and keep them, you know, on ice for decades at a time. I really want to make this like the last time I talk about it because I don't think it's fair. This shouldn't be out there, you know, for people to give their their opinion when there's nothing to talk about. You know, there's paper signs. I promote all my movies, all my work, but I don't like promoting my private life and I don't understand why this person, you know, I don't want to allow this person to take more advantage of, of my career and try to, to promote himself, get press. And I'm glad Sophia is standing up for herself because this Chris guy is definitely overstepping. There are some text messages that were shared in court where Chris says, now what? You can't keep four frozen lives forever or kill them. We will go to hell. Sophia said, we are going to hell regardless. That's a savage reply. You each signed an agreement saying neither of you would bring this embryo to term without the other's consent. I mean, it, it sort of seems like a dead issue at this point, is it? We actually signed these forms, you know, way at the very beginning before all the process happened. Mm -hmm. You know, none of the forms really discussed what would happen in the event of a separation. They all had to do with whether we were together. There was no really thought of, well, now she's going to change her mind and now we're not going to do it. I always assumed with our agreement that we we're going to agree to take these full term. Let's talk about the perception. Here's the perception. Sure. Sophia Vergara, beautiful actress. She's about to get married. She's starting this new life, very successful. She doesn't want to have a child with her ex. You are perceived as the guy who cannot let go of a relationship. She wants to move on. We filed this back in October. This is not something that is new. This has nothing to do with this at all. This has to do with bigger, really more, you know, legal and ethical uh, concepts. This Chris guy is full of crap. Sophia's is trying to move on and live her best life, and he's obviously hurt a big bruised ego. Their custody battle has gotten headlines and brings up a lot of ethical questions about what to do with hundreds of thousands of frozen embryos sitting in banks across the country. Here to weigh in on the subject is Dr. Roseman Rhodes, an expert in bioethics. Assisted reproduction has been around for about 30 years or more, so we have gotten used to it. A lot of children are conceived with assistance. We have, for the most part, been handling these situations with our current laws very well. Minimal regulation of assisted reproduction in the United States today, but I'm not sure that we need a lot more. And of course, it seems like this Nick guy is trying to leverage anything he can to make his case. He makes it political, trying to blame this clinic, blame his ex, Sophia, and so much more. He turns to suing doctors after losing his court battle to keep them. So he lost the initial battle to win custody over the frozen embryos, and now he's trying to sue the doctors. And at this point, Sophia has moved on. She's married this guy named Joe, and she wants to go and have kids with him. We just wanted to plan ahead. My, my boy for Nick, he's uh, two, three years younger than me, and he's never had a son. I have my son Manolo, so it's not that important. That you know, I'm, it's not like an emergency for me to have another kid. But for for Nick, yes, because he's never had a baby. At the time, Vergara seemed convinced she wanted to have children with Loeb. I already froze some eggs, so you know, I wanted to to take advantage of science. Why not? How far along are you? Uh, how far in along? the process? No, I took them out already. They're in a refrigerator. <laughs> It was a bitter court battle between Sophia and Nick for years, but eventually in 2021, a judge sided with her and imposed a permanent injunction to stop Chris from accessing them. Nick was quoted saying, I would have never gone forward with creating what Sophia and I regarded as lives if I knew that she would not consent or that she wanted to thaw and destroy the embryos in the event of a breakup. It actually looks like at some point he went to go and sue the facility for damages and to cover his legal fees, the ones that he's been dragging out for years and you say look i don't want to have a baby with you i'm not involved with you anymore can you blame me i can't blame you <laughs> I, and by the way a child needs a mother a mother and a loving and a, more than a mother needs a loving relationship of parents you know that get along that don't hate each other that i mean you I, hate I, each I, other now well, I don't hate him, but obviously he has a problem <laughs> my advice would be go out and find a girl of and course. make a family yeah. yes no, and you know what is like the th I, I totally understand him, but the thing is this that fortunately and unfortunately, there is law you wrote you 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 sign papers, legal papers, and he 
if it was so serious for him, this issue, which I totally respect if it's serious for someone, then you should have taken it more serious at the so time, was... like I did. So Chris sounds insane here. I mean, she's married Joe, she's moved on, she seems way happier with him, yet he can't let it go. Unfortunately, Sophia and her husband Joe are now divorcing, so we don't have a happy ending to this video. Page Six is reporting that Sophia and Joe are divorcing after seven years of marriage. Wow, I really thought that, like, this was going to have a happy ending. We made a difficult decision to divorce. As two people that love and care for one another, we politely ask for respect and our privacy as we navigate this new phase of our lives. Sophia and Joe have been growing apart for a while now, and they are taking some distance from each other to contemplate their future. The couple were last seen together last month in New Jersey as Sophia visited Joe on set of his project Nonas. But it looks like right now Sophia is in Italy in Capri, living her best life and celebrating her birthday. A lot of people have been asking where Joe is on her Instagram because they have not been posting lately so this divorce actually doesn't come to as a surprise to a lot of her like diehard fans he did actually post a happy birthday message to her on Instagram which people were a little confused about but if they are on good terms then like you know what I don't think there's any issues with exes being friends so now Sophia is a single woman once again and I hope at some point she finds her peace or just lives a happy life I mean I don't think you have to be with one person for the rest of your life to be happy you outgrow people but like i hope she's happy right now and you know she's worked so hard for everything she has so she deserves a little bit of like serenity for a while anyways i want to hear what you guys think of this video in the comments below and i'll see you in a new video soon bye guys